Hello friends, this is Road to IIT and today we are going to solve some first year first law of thermodynamics problems. Okay, uh, in the previous two or three videos we see the first law of thermodynamics and today we are going to solve some good question based on that. Okay, so without wasting a time, let's get started. So this is the problem number one. So here, as we see, uh, the PV diagram is given here. The initial and final stage is also given. And which of the path between initial I and final state F in the below figure, the work done of, on the gas is greatest. So here, uh, four processes are there. A, then B, C, and D. Okay. So we have to find out in which process the work done is greatest. See, uh, we, uh, I taught you at in the previous videos that work done and heat both are path function. That means it depends on the path. It do not depends on the initial stage where internal energy is the point function. That is, uh, that means it is based on the initial stage. So if we are going from I to F, the internal energy does not change because internal energy at the point F is the same for all this path A, B, C and D. It do not depend on the pa uh, path. It depends on the point. Okay. Uh, where uh, the work done, work done changes with the path. Work done is a path function. Now see, for a PV diagram, area under the curve gives us the work done, as we know. Now see, uh, the for a process A, the work done is this much. This much of work done is here. Then uh, B, then C and, D, and the D. So we can clearly see for the D, for the path D, the work uh, area under the curve is highest. That means work done uh, is greatest in the path D. Okay. So my right answer is the correct option is D. Why? Because work done is a path function. So work done on the gas depends on the path. The area under the PV diagram gives the work done on the gas between initial stage I and final state F. Is the area under the path D is greater than other path? That means D is my right option. Okay. So th this type of questions are frequently asked in a J Ribery Mange and uh, other types of competitive exam also. Okay, let's see one more. So here, this is a very important question. Uh, this covers a small topic. So please remember here, which type of ideal gas will have the largest value of Cp minus Cv. Now see, question is here, but the information in this question I'm going to give you is very important. See, Cp minus Cv, as we see in the previous video, Cp minus Cv is equals to R. So Cp minus Cv, uh, my right answer is this. The value will be same for all. Here are three types of gas are there. Monatomic, diatomic and polyatomic. But the Cp minus Cv is equals to R. So this is going to be same for all. But now as the topic uh, is here. So we are going to see the Cp and Cv's value for all three, uh, all these three cases. Okay. So first of all, uh, the correct option is D. Answer is D is very simple. But the information here is very important for uh, constant volume specific heat. That means CV, CV for monatomic gas, monoatomic gas is 3 by 2R. Okay, monoatomic gas uh, is 3 by 2R. Then for a diatomic gas, it's 5 by 2R and CV for polyatomic gas is 3R. Please note down this uh, values. This can be asked directly and this can be used for other some uh, solving the other sums also. Okay, CV for monoatomic gas is 3 by 2 R, for diatomic gas it's 5 by 2 R and for a polyatomic gas is 3 R. Now, as we know, CP minus CV is always R. Now we have the values of CV, so we can find the value of CP. CP is equal to CV plus R, for monoatomic gas 3 by 2 R plus R, that means 5 by 2 R. For diatomic gas it's 5 by 2 R plus R, that means 7 by 2 R. And for the polyatomic gas CV plus R, that means 3 R plus R, that is 4 R. Now Cp minus Cv as we know is always a constant value. Cp minus Cv for monoatomic gas that means 5 by 2R minus 3 by 2R it's R. So, uh, for diatomic it's also R and for polyatomic it's also R. That means Cp minus Cv is always constant and that's equals to R. Okay, let's see one more problem. Uh, okay, air is kept in a container having a wall which are slightly conducting. That means walls are slightly conducting. Heat transfer is very slow. The initial temperature and volume are 27 degree uh, equal to the temperature of surrounding and 
800 सेंटीमीटर क्यूब रिस्पेक्टिवली सो इनिशियल वॉल्यूम एंड टेम्परेचर इज गिवन फाइंड द राइज इन टेम्परेचर इफ द गैस इज कंप्रेस्ड टू 200 सेंटीमीटर क्यूब नाउ द टू कंडीशन आर गिवन कंडीशंस आर गिवन ए इन अ शॉर्ट टाइम बी इन अ लॉन्ग टाइम एंड एज्यूम फॉर आइडियल गैस गेमा इज इक्वल्स टू 1.4 एज आई टोल्ड यू इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो नाउ यू कैन सी हियर 27 इज द टेंपरेचर गिवन टेंपरेचर ऑफ द सराउंडिंग t1 एंड वॉल्यूम v1 इज गिवन 800 एंड वॉल्यूम v2 इज गिवन एंड वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट द राइज इन टेंपरेचर ओके now first case is in a short time in a short time that means uh, for a very short time when a gas is compressed in a short time the process is assumed as adiabatic why because there is a not enough time uh, that a heat transfer can take place between the system and the surrounding because it is a short time it is not possible for the heat transfer so whenever you see the word short time you have to assume the process as a adiabatic process okay now for adiabatic process we know that PV raised to gamma is equals to constant. This is the uh, for, uh, formula for adiabatic process. PV raised to gamma is equals to constant. Now, uh, but that is in the form of P and V. We see in the previous video uh, that formula in all three forms. That is P and V, V and T, and P and T. Uh, here V and T are given. Volume and temperature are given. So we have to formula of uh, we have to take the formula of V and T in the form of V and T. So in the form of V and T, the formula is T into V raised to gamma minus one is equals to constant. That means T1 V1 raised to gamma minus one, T2 V2 raised to gamma minus one is equals to constant. Okay. Now again here T2 is equals to T1 V1 upon V gamma minus one. Here it's gamma minus one. Okay. You can derive this formula by easy a simple method. Just put PV raised to uh, PV raised to gamma minus one, and uh, at the point P you just have to put N R T by V. Okay. And if you put n r t by v, then it comes out as t into v raised to gamma minus one is equals to constant. Okay, uh, uh, the printing mistake is, is there. It's gamma minus one. Okay. Now t one we know that t one is equals to t one we know that the temperature of surrounding that means twenty seven degree. Okay, but uh, we must have to convert into the which we have, must have to convert into the Kelvin. Okay, twenty seven degree that means three hundred. Then uh, the final initial pressure eight hundred by two hundred that is eight uh, hundred by that is four and here one point four minus one is here okay please see here it's minus one then then what we have to do then it's four is two point four and if we simplify this we have five two two Kelvin that is two four nine degree centigrade so the rise in temperature is two four nine minus twenty seven that is two 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 degree centigrade. Now, see if in this cases, if in this case the formula is given here, uh, if the process is a for a long time, then for a long time process the process is very slow, and if the process is very slow, the temperature in change is uh, must be zero. The process said that it's isothermal process. When the gas is compressed in a long time process, it's a very slow process, and therefore. The temperature of the system is always equal to the temperature of surrounding. Hence, the process is isothermal. So, the temperature is constant. That is the temperature of surrounding. That is twenty-seven degree. So, the rise in temperature is zero because initial pressure, uh, initial temperature, and final temperature is same. So, rise in temperature is zero. Okay. So, these are the few sums based on the first law of thermodynamics and the property we have learned in the previous video. Uh, keep watching. and thank you for watching this video if you like this video don't forget to share it and hit that subscribe button thank you